Hi, welcome to the second video on grief. The stages of grief today is the stage of anger. Anger is a hard stage, but it goes, uh, transitions from the sense of this isn't happening to me to this is happening to me, but I don't like what's going on. It, uh, the stage of anger is a lot of times a very difficult stage to keep uh, cope with, especially from the family's point of view or the staff or even the patient. The reason for this is that the fact that anger is displaced in all kinds of directions and projected into the environment at all times at random. In other words, you never know what might set somebody off when they're in this stage and what they will say or do. And uh, as we think about how we are grieving from all of those things that we cannot participate in, you see evidence of this anger in uh, the actions of others. Some feel like they had to have to ridicule others for wearing masks. Some are angry at their government officials, or some are even angry at God for all of this happening. The key here is that when you can't do anything right with the person who's going through this stage is to try to put yourself in the shoes of what they're feeling and where the anger is coming from. It's especially hard right now because we're all in the same situation. We are, but we are all experiencing different emotions that trigger our feelings. We see movies, for example, that we watch on TV or TV shows, perhaps, where people are gathering in coffee shops or bars, and we see them hugging and shaking hands, and we see them freely going in and out and all about. All of this hits us differently, and we often feel the pain of loss. We can also feed one another's anger by being angry and resentful and soon the emotions build. But also there's other emotions. We feel sadness and fear, anxiety, and sometimes even guilt. All of these can feed the emotional tornado that sometimes swirls around. The key is to help one another express our feelings without judgment and personal feelings that get wrapped up within them so that our feelings don't get wrapped up in with them. The key is to try to understand what the person is feeling. And if we're home alone, it's important for us to find somebody that we can talk to who will listen. You may, ha you may have such a person in your life that's a good listener. But you also might be the good listener for someone else. And maybe you can even take turns as far as listening to one another's stories and seeing and discerning what it is that you're learning from this experience. So anger is the second stage. And then the third stage is bargaining. Now bargaining is not as um, intense perhaps as anger or denial, but it's, uh, and it sometimes lasts for a briefer period of time. But if we're unable to face the sad facts in the first stage of your grief, and have been angry at people and God in the second phase, we sometimes then slip into thinking that we can figure out some kind of agreement which might postpone the inevitable from happening. Uh, children are a good example of this. If you've ever had a child who comes in and asks for something uh, for, from you and you say no and they, they often get angry and, oh, you don't love me anymore, and they storm off, go into the room, perhaps. But then a little bit later, they'll come back and say, Mom, if I, could, could I help you with the dishes? Or I cleaned up my room or any of those sort of things. And you say, oh, wonderful, thank you. And she says, and then your child says, okay, now can I go now? And, or can I have that what I asked for? And you still say, well, no. But that's that sort of bargaining chip that we try to barter with those around. Uh, there's a story in Kubler-Ross's book about this, where um, 
a patient who was in pain and discomfort, and she was unable to come, go home because of her dependence on injections for pain relief. And she had a son who proceeded with his plans to get married, as the patient had wished. She was very sad to think she would be unable to attend this big day, for he was her oldest and favorite child. With combined efforts, the staff was able to teach her self-hypnosis, which enabled her to be quite comfortable for several hours. She had made all sorts of promises if she could only live long enough to attend this marriage. The day preceding the wedding, she left the hospital as an elegant lady. Nobody would have believed her real condition. She was the happiest person in the whole world and looked radiant. I wonder what I wondered, Gula Ross says, what her reaction would be when the time was up for which she had bargained. I'll never forget the moment when she returned to the hospital. She looked tired and somewhat exhausted, and before I could say hello, said, Now don't forget, I have another son. So this bargaining uh, mechanism, coping with grief, is a, really an attempt to postpone uh, what is coming. It includes a promise that, oh, I'll never ask anything more if I could just get this one thing. But often bargaining le is uh, short-lived and also, uh, it's not the... Um, longest stage, it, it sometimes comes back and forth. If only I follow my doctor's wishes. In this pandemic, it might be only if I stay at home, then, it, then I'll be able to go back to normal again. And we know that we'll never be normal for a while at least, and never be really normal again. And so what we're doing is we're grieving a, a, a lot of our way of living and the way that we used to live. So the future is unknown. And sometimes we try to bargain to see if we can make it a little more tolerable to endure and to digest. So that's it for stage two and three, our anger and bargaining. Take care. God bless.